trans Tiger Highway here in northern Quebec, the most northern road in eastern North America, as well as it being the most remote road on the continent. I'm with my brother Max, we're in the all-new Tacoma. We just finished driving the James Bay Highway up to Nunavut. Now we're doing some tarmac hunting, doing some winter camping, and having some good old-fashioned Type 2 fun. On the trans saga highway here in northern quebec this road is the most northern road in eastern north america as well as it being the most remote road on the continent we hear this road is absolutely beautiful and we hope that we're well provisioned to sustain us and keep us nice and comfortable through this cold winter weather excited for this trip lots to come but right now we're just uh cooking up some breakfast so come tag along oh yeah So halfway up the Trans Tiger Road, there's an outfitter which will supply us with gas as well as a few other things. Apparently there's hot showers, which we will not be doing because we had showers last night. Uh, we stayed in a hotel, uh, which was wonderful. In any case, we're gonna make a stop there and we'll be camping somewhere either before or after the outfitters on some of the Crown, which is the entire area of the Trans Tiger. It's mo mostly Crown. So lots of camping opportunity, lots of firewood. Lots of termigan. Termigan. Should have to be for a bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Very beautiful. How long do you, you see lanes? No, no, not yet. Wolf. Just just no. termigan. So we just finished our stop at Mirage Outfitters. They are the only stop along the Trans Taiga. Filled up with gas, all the jerry cans filled up with food, which was so necessary. And uh, we're back on the road looking for a place to set up camp. So there's ptarmigan out here and I have my license to hunt ptarmigan and we might do some of that a little bit later on the trip. But we want to get some practice shots off. So we have a bit of time. We're just gonna practice shooting on some of these targets with the, the 12 gauge, should be fun. Okay, this is just, this is just target shot. Woo, that's awesome. I'll just eject all of them there and grab them after slug. Yeah, that one kick. There you go. There you go. Woo! We compacted the snow around the tent to somewhat success, but without the snowshoes on, it's really easy to post hole. And post hole is when you just, well, I'll show you what post hole is. That's a post hole. <laughs> it's pretty deep snow. 
<laughs> so effortful. So this road really is kind of mind-blowing considering it just leads right into the middle of Quebec, kind of into the middle of nowhere it seems. But if you follow some of the power lines that run along the road here, you'll realize that there's a massive amount of infrastructure behind the scenes and that is due to the power needs of this province. Something like 50% of the electrical needs of Quebec are met by the hydroelectric dams as part of the James Bay project that are along the Trans Taiga Highway. There are massive dams here with crazy amount of infrastructure to produce electricity. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, this place wouldn't exist, this road wouldn't exist without those dams. Super controversial when this came in. Some people like it because hey, it attaches the, the Cree communities to roads, but also it um, flooded thousands of square kilometers of traditional hunting grounds. Here you go, mate. Thanks, nice hot. Hot. It's too hot? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't gonna put it. Yeah. Yeah, it smells good. Yep. It's a uh, honey garlic chicken. Alright guys, that's it for us. We're going to bed. It's about 10. See you in the morning. Well, good morning everyone. Got the hot coffee. More than halfway down the Trans Taiga, we have the rest of the day to get to Brise, which is possibly the furthest point that we can make it here in the winter. Maybe we have enough gas, maybe we don't. We'll figure that out in a bit. Apparently there's caribou along the way, as well as some ptarmigan, which we hope to harvest for some yummy food. <laughs> nice snowy day out here in the central of Quebec. seen a lot of ptarmigan on the road around here there's absolutely no shortage of them we're gonna go back into the bush a little bit and see if we can get ourselves a tasty snack to eat really scuttled all the way back here the end of the ptarmigan tracks you can see it started setting its wings here and uh, the bee just up in a tree no luck I figure because of all the snow that just came in ptarmigan are just like up in trees nesting or roosting or whatever it is that they do We were told by a local Cree resident that at kilometer 570 the caribou like to cross the Trans Taiga and sure enough here we are at 
Kilometer 570 with some relatively fresh tracks. It's hard to tell because it just snow, uh, the snow just came down, but the caribou have recently crossed today, yesterday, who knows. They're in the area, it'd be very cool to see them. Why, hello there. The silos of Goldeneye. That's what I was thinking. Does remind me of Goldeneye. Well, that's it, we're in Bris Bay. This is as far as you can make it on the Trans Taiga in the winter time, the furthest point away from any town in North America. Pretty wild to be out here in the middle of winter. Sun's just coming out, it's absolutely beautiful out here. This is a massive hydroelectric dam with an enormous reservoir behind it. Part of the James Bay project, which I had discussed and talked about yesterday. Mission accomplished. But we still have a few things left for this trip. We're going to backtrack a little bit to where the caribou crossing is. We're going to set up camp there to give us the best chance of possibly seeing some wildlife and perhaps still getting a ptarmigan. So, still lots to come. So this isn't the best place to camp because the winds are whipping around here. But we're at mile 570, kilometer that is, kilometer 570. This is where the caribou crosses. So if we want to see caribou, or at least give ourselves the best chance of seeing them, we should probably uh, post up here. If you guys are wondering where we got all this wood and you didn't watch our last video, we picked up all this lumber from Chisasabi. We just bought it because uh, it saved us a whole bunch of time of having to process our own from all this scraggly brush out here. Both Max feel like today is the coldest day of our trip so far. The first night we slept out it was negative 30. When we slept on in Nunavut, that was pretty dang cold too. Not exactly sure the temperature, but the winds were ripping. But tonight, I don't know, it feels awfully cold. I have a feeling it's an all night fire type tonight. Starting to feel the heat from the fire and it is glorious. little pepperoni. Tutti fruity, 
flavored jelly bean water. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Oh my god, that's good. Costco Shepherd's Pie dehydrated, rehydrated. Thermometer doesn't read it, but my bones do. This is the coldest it's been out here on this trip so far. We've been down to negative 30 with the wind chill, plus the wind chill, and nothing compares to how cold it feels right now. Whew, I had my gloves off for, uh, I don't know, three or four minutes, and they are numb. It is cold out there. Whoa, man, is it ever cold out there. It's 7.45, but Max and I are both pretty exhausted. We have a big day ahead of us tomorrow, but for now, we're gonna go to bed. So we'll see you in the morning. Good night. Yeah, the stove was listing quite a bit this morning. No, was it? Yeah, towards you, and I tilted it back, and then I was like, "Good man." We're at least three feet above solid ground right now, so everything you know, there's a pothole in everywhere. The stove is sinking deep into the earth, and uh, at one point the stove was listing kind of sideways, and then. I knocked the water down by accident, so we gotta make more water. Fortunately, all the water you need is right in the tent. You don't need water unless you step on it, folks. <laughs> oh, all the cold, moist air seeping in underneath the, the door there. The humidity. Right around negative 30. Yeah, the humidity makes this like the coldest night by a long shot. Hobbit slide here. No caribou spotting this morning, though that was kind of expected. Though we did put ourselves in a position to be able to see them. I think the issue being that we're two stinky guys that uh, that make a lot of noise. So posting up here in hopes of seeing the caribou was a bit of wishful thinking, though. You gotta try, right? Anyways, we're about to get on the road. We got a long three days drive ahead of us. A bunch of unknowns, including where we're gonna sleep tonight.
right, quick little stop. Got some food, got some gas, got some coffee. Back on the open road. I saw some grush flouse. I saw some grush flouse. I saw a couple ptarmigan flush into the woods just over there. So I just suited up. I'm gonna go see if I can get us something to eat. There's another one right over there. It's too close to the road. Let's go a little bit, go a little deeper. Yeah. Wow. Okay, beautiful bird. Check out its tail plumage. Look at that. Isn't that cool? The feet are like snowshoes. It's got these two little ptarmigan breasts. We're gonna fry them in butter. Clean off all those little hairs. Oh man, that's part of the experience. <laughs> First time trying ptarmigan. Wow, not like I expect. Meaty. Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. Tastes more like steak. Yeah, dude, that's what it, it tastes like. like steak. It's closer to steak, like beef, beefier than chicken. Wow. That's, that's really good. Excellent. Yeah. That's it. We're at the end of the Trans Taiga Highway, the most remote road in North America, as well as it being the most northern road on the east side of this continent. Pretty cool experience being up here in the Taiga. In all honesty, I thought this would be a lot more of a mundane drive, all 40 something hours of it. But the transition from down south, the deciduous forest, up into the boreal, into the taiga, was uh, fascinating. And then being up here in this northern latitude was uh, anything but mundane. It was a beautiful drive. Awesome to be out here in the new Tacoma. What a reliable vehicle. Toyota, if you're listening, give me the truck. Just give it to me, okay? Just give me the truck. Thank you. But uh, yeah, Trans Taiga here in northern Quebec, this part's done. Look at that, right on the dot. Beautiful. <laughs> it's a happy ending. <laughs> Made it home 69 hours on the dot of drive time. What is the meaning of this? What does it all mean, Xander? <laughs>